Okay, today we're taking a look at the Columbus 384RK. Put on here first, area for generator prep, but otherwise that's just storage for now. Your batteries are gonna go right there. Uh, you have storage for two of them, and then your hydraulic pump is right up there. Just make sure that that fluid is full and check for leaks every once in a while. If there are any, you can just tighten those fittings down and that usually makes it stop. Uh, you got an attachment here for solar on the side if you wanted to add a portable solar panel, part of the Go Power Solar Kit on there. Uh, you have your light switches here for the light inside of here, as well as the front cap light, and then a little switch here. Your first propane tank is right here. That is tied in right there, and then the regulator is up there. Uh, I believe they're independently regulated on this one, so there's no switch over, so open up whichever one you want to use in here is that big underneath storage area get your leveling panel here which i'll go over towards the end this is your inverter right here your inverter converts your battery power over to 120 volts inside uh, that way when you're driving you can power that fridge a big old residential fridge so uh, if you're planning on driving uh, turn the inverter on that's going to convert that battery power so that fridge stays on while you're on the move you got your vacuum hoses here for your built-in vacuum, uh, a little outside shower hose, extra battery ties, manual jack cranks, and the spare tire crank right there. Let's take a look over here now. You do have a power cord reel that you can wind your power cord up onto if you decide to do so. Uh, then you have your water bay here. Uh, this is the Nautilus system. It's actually quite simple. Um, you're just gonna adjust the valves to whatever you are desiring to use. So if you are staying at a campsite that has direct water hookup, like a spigot on the site, you'll use city water. So you'll look at the diagram here, turn these knobs to city water, and then plug into this connection right here. Attach your hose, turn the water on, and that's gonna run water directly to your faucets, sinks, toilets, showers, all of that. Um, while camping at a campground, usually they're pushing high pressure, so it is good to get a pressure regulator for here. Uh, just in case that pressure is too high and blows your lines out. So it's good to get a regulator for that. Uh, if you're going to be staying somewhere that doesn't have direct water hookup, you'll use your fresh tank. So you're going to turn to power fill tank. Uh, make sure when you're turning, the, there's t turning these, there's no pressure in the lines. Uh, that's not good for the system. So just make sure you have the water shut off when you're adjusting these valves. So power tank fill, twist there, 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 and there. Now when you plug into here, that's going to run water into your fresh tank. Once that tank is full, you'll turn your water pump on and it'll pump from that tank to your faucets. But for that pump to draw from the fresh tank, you have to turn the knobs to dry camping. So after that tank's filled, turn it to dry camp, turn the pump on, and then water is going to start getting pumped to the faucet sinks, showers, all of that. Um, we'll go over the winterizing settings later on. This is your black tank flush right here. When you're draining your black tank, you can attach a hose to here, turn the water on, that shoots water into your black tank to help rinse it out. You have a second black tank flush down here for your other black tank, it does the same thing. And you have your tank poles right here, black, gray, and gray. Black is the holding tank for your toilet, uh, and uh, gray is going to be sinks and showers. Pull them out to open them and push them in to close them. This is an area for a water filter. You can put that in here. Uh, all the water for the system is gonna run through this. So you can add a filter onto there. Uh, got two outlets here. You have a water pump switch right here if you need to turn it on. Otherwise, um, you can turn it on inside. Down there is where the sewer drain is. So that's where that water is going to come out when you pull your tank poles. You can see it running up and underneath there. Uh, tires, uh, those will be filled. Lug nuts will be checked for you. So you'll be ready for the road. And you have your second drain back here uh, for the kitchen sink. Gray tank pole right there. Push it in to close it, and then it drains out of there. Spare tires down there. That crank is on the other side for running that down. And then in the back here is your fresh tank drain. Close it off when you're filling your fresh tank and open it when you want to drain it. Access to the back of your fridge is here. The ice maker valve is back here. If you need to cut the water supply off to your ice maker, just follow the instructions right on the cap itself, I believe. 
It's a pull to close the valve, push it in to open the valve. Your 50 amp power supply plugs in right here. Then you have the ladder, 250 pounds capacity for getting onto your roof. Roof is walkable, just limit to two people up there at once. That's never good to have too much weight on there. Uh, you got your back entrance here, slide out, tires. Two outlets here. Furnace exhaust right there. And then this is your water heater. Before you run water from your city or from your fresh tank, make sure you put your anode rod in. It goes in right down there. Tighten that in there with a one and one sixteenth socket wrench. Then you're good to go ahead and run water from either the city or the water pump. This hot water tank is going to start to fill up. Uh, as it fills, I like to leave the hot taps open inside. That way any air pressure that builds up in here is released. And then once water starts coming out of the hot side of your sink, that's how you know this tank's full and ready to be turned on. Never turn the water heater on when the tank isn't full. Otherwise, you can melt your water lines, cause leak, causes leaks. You don't want that. So make sure you only turn this on when it's full. So when the water's coming out of the hot side of that sink, that's how you know that this tank's full. You can turn it on. It is gas or electric, and both the switches to turn it on are going to be inside. Do have a little reset here for the electric one if it's not working. Um, to drain the water heater, pull out on this tab right here. That's the pressure relief valve. Turn off all your water supply so that pressure doesn't build back up again. And you can take that anode rod back out with your 1 in 1 16 socket. On this side of pass-through, we have your battery disconnect right here. When you can't pull this out, that means the batteries are on. Give it a twist, pulls out, batteries are now cut off. You do have slide out controls in here. You can do all your slides and awnings from out here if you didn't want to go inside. Uh, but there are also switches in there as well. And I'll show you those later. Road vac right here for that built in vacuum. You can plug in your hose there, turn it on to get to the bag. Pull on this little circle here and that pops it open. Only comes with one bag. Uh, so if you throw that bag away, you'll have to buy a new one. And then on this side is your other propane tank. Left's open, right's closed. That said, we'll head inside. First switch as you walk in is your ceiling fan. Max air control right here, I believe. This one. Yep. For this van back here in the kitchen. Got all your controls on here. I usually just use the on and off, but you can adjust fan speeds up and down. Pretty simple. Press power off, it's gonna close again. Got your half bath in here. Pedal flush toilet, so step down on that pedal to flush it. Got another Max Air fan control in here for this one up here. Light switch, GFCI is in here if you need to reset your outlets, press that reset key. Down here, breakers, fuses. Looks like we have a blown fuse or a missing fuse right now. Um, that's what that red light means. But we'll get one put in there before we pick it up. And then everything's labeled in here so you know what each one does. It is good to take extra fuses with you just in case one were to blow on you. You got your living room area, couches. They fold into beds. Take your back cushions off, and then you'll pull up from right here. And you can see how that all flops out. Dinette, table extension, lift up, and then just pull that little slide out. Residential fridge, if you wanna learn more about that, you can read in on the manual about it. And you get your burners. Oven light switch and the panel light switch, we're turning those on. And then to light the burners, push in, turn to the left. You can hear that spark going on when you have this pressed in. Burner, 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 oven. When you're lighting the oven, make sure the oven's open and obviously take out all the cardboard and plastic before you do so. Don't, don't want to start a fire. Got your sink, keys are on the sink. Gray keys are going to be for your compartment doors, and these purple keys will be for all your doors. So you got a lot of keys, uh, so it should be two sets. Microwave, pretty self-explanatory, just like one at home. 
pop-up outlets are back here when you're moving these up and down be careful with them they are fragile if you drop them you might break the spring mechanism so just lower them softly and be gentle with them lights under here are going to be presses you got your remotes in here for your tvs stereo and your fireplace so let's see fireplace let's say you turn it on there are switches on the fireplace as well. Power button, timer, I believe up to five hours, yep. Heat, so different colors, and then temperature adjustment right there. Electric fireplace doesn't use propane, so if you wanna save propane and not run the furnace, I'd run that fireplace instead. It'll heat this whole place up in about 45 minutes. Warranty information manuals will all be in this packet right here. You got your stereo, so we'll go over that. Power button's right there. Now you have three speaker zones on this one. A is these speakers right here. B is the speakers in your ceiling back there and there. And then C is your speakers outside, so when you tap them, you can see the display comes on A, B, C. As you tap one, that turns it off. So you can have them all off, you can have them all at the same time, you can have them all on separately. Uh, sources, change between your source, you can play the audio from the TV. You can also connect your phone to the Bluetooth and play your own music. Um, what else we got? Chairs. Uh, you have lumbar here and here, and then recline is pull up on the black tab here. That'll open it up. Um, light switch down here. And the reason that some of these lights aren't turning on as I'm flipping those is because of that blown fuse that we saw earlier, or the missing fuse, I mean. Uh, we'll get that put in there, and then those lights will turn back on. Uh, down here are the inside vacuum inputs. So you have the one for the hose right there, and then just the pedal flip here if you're gonna sweep stuff in. Super simple. Take a look at your panel now. So HVAC control is going to be your thermostat leveling. So you're gonna be able to do the individual leveling adjustments, uh, but usually I just use that yellow panel outside. It's easier that way. Water pump switch right there for turning your water pump on and off. Next page is devices. So that's where you're gonna be able to do all of the stuff on that home page kind of in one spot. So your monitor panel is gonna be your tank levels. As the tanks fill, these a bar will slide here to show that it's filling up. You have a water pump switch turning on and off. Tank heaters for if you're camping in the winter that warms the underbelly of the trailer to keep those tanks from freezing. Then you have your water heater on and off switches here, electric or gas. If you're plugged in, I just use the electric one. 10 to 15 minutes after you turn it on, you'll have hot water. If you're not plugged in, use that gas one. 10 to 15 minutes, you'll have hot water. With the gas, just make sure your gas supply is open. Turn it on, it'll light itself. Has an igniter on the water heater. Uh, 10 to 15 minutes, yeah, it'll be hot. Uh, when you don't need your hot water, you can turn that back off. We don't want you to be wasting any extra propane that you don't need to. Um, so yeah, shut that off when you're not using it 10 to 15 minutes before you need to take a shower or wash dishes or something along those lines. Turn that water heater on. Alrighty. Awning control. So let's go to HVAC so we can show you setting up the ACs. So you have bedroom climate and the main climate. So you have the air conditioner back there and then one up front. So we'll start with the bedroom. Alrighty, so you go to source. Heat, cool, heat and cool. We're just needing cool. And it turns on. When you hit back, you can set your temperature up or down. Uh, you can change your fan speed to high or low or auto. So if it's on auto, when it reaches 62 degrees, it'll shut off. And if it gets hotter than that, it'll turn back on again. Uh, main climate zone. While we wait for this. Uh, you can also connect this to your phone and uh, do it from your phone if you think that's easier. It might be a little faster too. Alrighty, same thing as the other one. This is where you're going to be able to select heat though. 
Heat runs through your floors and AC runs through the ceiling. Just a little preface there. Uh, just with these floor vents, make sure you don't put the full weight of your feet on there because uh, they can bend and crack and you don't want that. Uh, but yeah, we go to source. Cool. And you can hear it fire on. Alrighty. You can do lighting from here, so you can turn on lights individually from that screen. That's all that is. Uh, slides, we can run the slides in and out. Uh, awnings, we can run the awnings in and out. Uh, I'm going to show you those with the switches outside though, because this is just going to take too long. Bed lift comes up, and you got storage under there. That's where your extra chairs are for your dinette. If you do get a generator, the start-stop switch is right there. Dresser, TV, in the bathroom. Pop-up outlets in here as well. Again, be as gentle as possible with them. They do break, so softly set them down. Light switches are on the wall. Shower, make sure your shower doors are latched for travel. Don't want those sliding around and breaking on you. Uh, you have another fan in here. Adjustment is in the corner, fan on, fan off. And then the open and close is right there. Put your closet. Um, pedal flush toilet is well in there. Step on that pedal to flush it. Uh, this unit does have optional. Uh, you can install the gateway here. That's for Wi-Fi. Uh, you can install the wine guard gateway into there. And then you attach a SIM card into the gateway, and that way you could have internet if you wanted to. Uh, if that's an option you'd like to exercise, you can talk to your salesman about getting that added on. Any other add-ons as well, feel free to speak to your salesman about that. Uh, smoke alarm is up on the ceiling up there. Carbon monoxide detector and LP gas leak detector are down here. Just to preface, those do draw off your, uh, this does draw off your batteries when your unit isn't plugged in. Uh, it's hardwired for the government safety regulation. Uh, so that little green light on there does draw power from the batteries. So if you're not connected to 50 amp service outside, uh, your battery will eventually die on you. So if you're not gonna be staying in here, I would just disconnect the negative end of your battery. And for winter storage, I'd just take that battery out entirely, put it somewhere warm, or uh, keep it on a trickle charger to keep it from dying on you. Um, well, with all of that said, I'm just going to show you what these actually look like folded all the way out. So just a sec, I'm going to pause the video, and we'll get back to what it looks like when they're all the way out. With the back cushions off, lift up from the bottom, pull out, flap the legs down, and then it sets down like that, and fold the back piece down like that. And you got the bed, same thing on this side. And now this couch over here is a little different, I believe. Might be the same. It is the same, actually. So same thing, take the back cushion off, lift up from here, flop down, and then put that back piece down. All right, let's go over winterizing. To winterize this unit, come here, turn your winterize valves to this diagram. So green this way, red this way, white this way, and blue that way. That changes where the water pump draws from. So now it's not gonna draw from your fresh tank and it's gonna draw from this end right here. Take a hose, plug it into here, and then run it into a jug of antifreeze. Turn your water pump on and then that pump is gonna start drawing the antifreeze from that jug and run it through your lines. So turn that pump on. It's gonna start running the antifreeze to your lines. Open up all your faucets one at a time. Run them until it's completely pink coming out of the faucet. Make sure you get plenty of antifreeze down the drains as well. Do that at each faucet, every toilet, in the shower, outside shower, every single faucet you have. Uh, you have an ice maker in your fridge, so I'd even run antifreeze through your refrigerator as well, just to play it safe. Uh, just a heads up though, take your water filter out before you do winterize. Uh, antifreeze will ruin your water filter. Um, so make sure you take that out before you do so. Make sure all your holding tanks are empty. So drain your fresh tank out, which is back here again. Drain out all of your black and gray tanks as well. Make sure those are all empty. Um, and then your low point drains are down there. So the white one is your 
cold line and the red one's your hot line. Once you run antifreeze through all your faucets and everything inside, you'll come out down to there, open, it, open those up, and run them until it's completely pink coming out of there, a complete solid pink stream. That's how you know you've got an antifreeze through the entire system. Uh, once that's done, you can go ahead, shut that pump off, and you should be all set. Uh, just uh, make sure again that all of these tanks are empty. You don't want any uh, any water in there that could cause those to freeze and crack your tanks. Uh, you don't need to fill them with antifreeze, but it doesn't hurt if you leave some in there. Uh, and then there is another thing you can do to make sure you get all the water out. Uh, you can blow the lines out with an air compressor beforehand, uh, but you don't need to. But that's just an extra little safety precaution step you can do to make sure that there's no water left in there. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you're not confident enough with doing that yourself, we do offer winterizing as a service here if you wanted us to do it for you. All right, let's go over this leveling panel now. To turn it on, press the up and down arrows at the same time. And you see that green light come on, that's so you know the panel is active. Holding it up will run your front jacks up. Holding down will run the front jacks down. Now, since there's no batteries in this unit right now, the jacks aren't going to move. You do need your batteries on for the jacks to work. Uh, but yeah, up and down runs those front jacks up and down, obviously. Uh, once you're off your truck at the campsite, you can hit auto level, and that is going to level the unit out all by itself. Uh, it takes about five-ish minutes. If you're walking around inside the trailer while it's doing it, it'll throw it off a of calibration, so it'll take a little longer. Uh, but it eventually, it'll get there, it'll be leveled out. You go ahead and run your slide outs out after that. Um, and then let's say you're ready to leave now. Run those slides in, then you'll come here, and you'll press hitch height. Hitch height's going to return those jacks to the position they were before you pressed auto level. So theoretically, that should be within a couple inches of where you got off your truck from. So that way, loading back on is pretty simple. Uh, once you're back onto that truck, retract all. That's going to run them all the way back up. And then you're ready to drive away. Just make sure that power cord's unplugged. Uh, if that didn't really make sense, uh, you can refer to the paper up there that's showing you what everything does. Otherwise, Give us a call, bring questions with you to your pickup date, and we'll walk you through it again. Uh, well, with all of that said, hopefully this video was helpful to you. If there's anything you're still confused about, please bring questions with you to pickup date, and we'd love to get those answered for you. We don't want you to leave. We don't want you to leave uh, not knowing something important. So please bring questions with you, uh, and. Uh, after pickup, uh, if anything goes wrong, contact the service department, contact sales. They can walk you through helping, helping you out if something wasn't working right. They can tell you what you got to do. Uh, or if something breaks, we can schedule for a service appointment. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this video is helpful. And uh, thank you for watching. And I uh, hope you have a great day and a great camping experience.